Alright guys, it's your boy Carolina Chris. Two six. Alright guys, I'm your boy Carolina Chris26. This is my latest episode to my new series I started called Native Heroes in Comics. It's to highlight my love for my culture. I am a member of the Kohiri tribe and my love for comics. I love comics, I love buying them, love collecting them, and I love reading them. So, I wanted to do these videos in the hopes to shine a light on Native American superheroes in comics, past and present, in the hopes that I can inspire a young boy or girl or just someone who has never read a comic before in their life and they come across this video and get inspired to start reading comics. That's the hopes. I just, I hope it works, you know? So, guys, the nice episode we're doing is about. Probably a character a lot of you know about, a lot of my seasoned comic book readers. But for those who are not seasoned comic book readers, this is for you. He goes by the name of John Proudstar, a.k.a. Thunderbird. John Proudstar, 6'1", 225 pounds, black hair, brown eyes, grew up on the Apache tribe in Camp Verde, Arizona. His mutant powers manifested at the most opportune moment when he stopped a bison that was charging at a young girl. John discovered that he had superior strength and endurance, abilities that allowed him to lift massive amounts of weight and run great distances at amazing speed. After gaining notoriety on his reservation due to saving the girl, John decided that he didn't want to stay idle. And lying about his age, he enlisted in the U.S. Marines for a two-year tour of duty. There, John was an outcast and a loner, but he found sense of purpose and camaraderie with his fellow soldiers. Attaining the rank of corporal, John earned a number of medals, including one for rescuing a helicopter pilot. One night, on the way to Guantanamo, the helicopter John was in was hit by lightning and crashed into the Caribbean Sea. The pilot, having sustained some injuries, John managed to drag him into the lifeboat. But the waters were rough, and he thought they were going to drown. Suddenly, the sky opened with a roar of thunder, and John saw a bolt of lightning that looked like a bird. That signaled the end of the storm, and they were eventually rescued, but John knew that his grandfather would have said that he had found his totem, the bird of thunder. He returns to his tribe afterward, only to find himself depressed and restless. He spends his days in boredom, often running down buffalo and wrestling them to the ground. When John returned from service, he learned that his mother had been diagnosed with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, a terminal form of cancer by Dr. Edwin Marthynik. When John's reporter friend Michael Whitecloud alerted him that something was amiss with the medical testing, John agreed to help investigate Marthynik in the Arroyo Medical Laboratory running the lab work. Looking for adventure, James stowed away in his brother's pickup truck, and the three of them infiltrated Arroyo to look for evidence. It turned out that Marthynik had been doctoring the lab results in order to secure test subjects for his own illegal research into genetic enhancement. The doctor turned out to be a wolfman creature himself, but thanks to his blossoming mutant powers, John was able to hold his own with Marthynik long enough to get the others to safety. Dr. Marthynik blew up Arroyo Labs to cover his escape, and John and James were able to confirm that their mother was actually in perfect health. Soon after, John Proudstar was called into service again and went to war for his country. He earned himself several medals and an honorable discharge, but he returned to Camp Varday a changed man. He was withdrawn and bitter and had only little love left for the white man's world. Quite possibly, the experiences John had during the war served as a painful reminder to the fate of the Apache and the other Native American tribes. It was in this angry, bitter state that Professor Charles Xavier found John Proudstar in while looking for new recruits to help rescue the missing X-Men. He is later recruited by Professor X to join his third group of X-Men. Although Proudstar is reluctant to be a part of a white man's team, he agrees and takes on the superhero title Thunderbird. After successfully completing his first mission with the X-Men, Thunderbird turns out to be so volatile and ill-mannered that he constantly throws off the team's synchronization. He often finds himself going head to head with Cyclops. This anger and abrasiveness was arguably what helped lead to his untimely end. 
The new team successfully rescued the X-Men from Krakoa, the living island. John hoped to find a place where he could fit in, but he chose the wrong person to bond with. Later that day, he asked Iceman to give him a tour of the mansion. But the mutant teenager was rather unfriendly, not liking the idea of there being a whole bunch of newcomers. Thunderbird was more than willing to fight for his place among the X-Men. But as almost all the original X-Men quit the following day to pursue regular lives, there was no need to. However, John remained rather competitive and tense. While the other X-Men would take some downtime to relax, John was always trying to be the best, measuring himself by comparison to his teammates, especially Wolverine. Thunderbird also constantly challenged Cyclops' authority as team leader. His over-eagerness caused John to get careless, and he even injured his leg during a danger room session. Because of that, Cyclops didn't want to take John along on the team's next mission, but Thunderbird insisted on coming. During the new team's second mission, the X-Men went to Cheyenne Mountain in the Colorado Rockies, which was the location of North American Air Defense Center that was ruled by Count Nefaria. Nefaria planned to escape with a small aircraft. However, Thunderbird was able to follow him as he leaped onto the airplane that was carrying Count Nefaria. Ignoring Banshee's warnings and Professor X's telepathic instructions for him not to be on that plane, Thunderbird refuses, insisting that this was his chance to show that he was a true Apache warrior. The plane explodes, killing Proudstar, while Nefaria survived. It has been accepted by many that it was Thunderbird's pride that killed him. His brother James, Warpath, later took on the Thunderbird name, honoring his brother. He first blamed the death of his brother on the X-Men, but later the brave young Apache became a member of X-Force and the X-Men and started using the name Warpath. A third character has also gone by the name Thunderbird, Neil Shara, who was briefly a member of the X-Men. Wow, dude. I mean, it kind of sucks. Only after his second mission, he gets... He gets killed, man. It's like, God, I mean, during his second mission. But, I mean, he thought he was doing the right thing, but if he would have just listened to Professor X or, Cy or Banshee's warnings, you know, it, he would have been all right, man. But he was cocky. He brought back from the dead for a brief time. Uh, it's crazy, bro. I mean, Thunderbird got a bad rap, man. Uh, let's give you his power sets. Thunderbird's muscles produce less fatigue toxins than the muscles of ordinary humans. He could exert himself at peak capacities for several hours before fatigue began to impair him. Superhuman strength and could lift approximately two tons under optimum conditions. His muscle tissue was three times as dense as that of a normal human being and was distributed in such a way to give Thunderbird massive shoulders, arms, and thighs. His skin was several times as dense as that of a normal human being and included an additional layer of leathery epidermis. His lungs were oversized and his respiratory system was developed in such a way to allow him maximum wind and endurance with a minimum of oxygen intake. These features made Thunderbird a natural outdoor fighter and athlete. Also, he was somewhat more resistant to physical injury than an ordinary human due to the density of his skin and muscle tissue. Not invulnerable, he was capable of withstanding impact forces and blunt trauma that would have severely crippled or killed an ordinary human with only mild to moderate discomfort. Thunderbird was also a very skilled tracker. I mean, he, he didn't have no like, you know, laser beams, he couldn't fly, he wasn't, he wasn't bulletproof. But, I mean, he could take a hit, you know. Um, so, but he got a bad rap. I just felt like it was a story that needed to be told. Thunderbird was created by Lynn Wine, uh, Chris Claremont, and Dave Cockrum. Uh, he first appeared in Giant Size X-Men Issue 1, uh, 1975, as part of the all-new, all-different X-Men team. His death was planned early on to show the readers that anything could happen in the, the new X-Men comic. So it's crazy, bro.
Thunderbird is still considered to be one of the few X-Men who have truly died. Uh, it was a bummer, guys. Uh, I hope you appreciate it. I mean, I know this is probably one of the sor sorriest stories I've done so far. I just felt it had to be done. You know, I just felt it had to be told. You know, cause... But, I mean, later on we're doing Warpath. I mean, I, I like Warpath. Between the two brothers, I like Warpath the most. Even though he's not much different as far as power set compared to Thunderbird, but I like Warpath, you know, so. Guys, I really appreciate y'all coming through. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button, comment, let me know what you thought about the video, hit the notification bell for all videos I may post because I will be doing more characters. Yeah, man, so. Sucks, man. Rest in peace, Thunderbird. <laughs> yeah. With that being said, guys, be safe and always remember to make comic book collecting fun again. Peace.